This is Movie Town. Lionel Gamlin reporting. No, it wasn't a very nice day for the Grand National this year. Chilly, rainy weather, in fact. But anticipation of the thrills and the profits kept people cheerful. <laughs> One entertaining variation was that Mrs Topham had her own commentators to describe the great steeplechase. The BBC accepted the situation and the voices were there at all strategic points. There were 47 runners, not a record field but a big one all the same. Freebooter, a previous winner, was favourite and Teal was next in demand. The jockeys, professional and amateur, were calm and confident. Every one of them had a chance, for as we know, anything can happen in the Grand National, and luck must always play a part, whatever the qualities of rider or mount. field lined up and was almost ready to go when a few went off on a false start and broke the tape. <laughs> this naturally led to some delay but after a few minutes they got away very well. About four and a half miles to go and 30 jumps to jump. The very first fence took a heavy toll. Yes, it happened last year and it was almost the same this time. St. Cassidy the second, Golden Surprise, Early Mist, Owl's Venture, Irish Lizard, Court Painter, Dominic's Bar fell or parted from their jockeys, a number of whom were injured. Teal and Freebooter were leading the field at the third jump, where Whispering Steel into Alia and Caesar's wife were among the casualties. And so on to Beecher's Brook, where Teal led from Freebooter, Scar Home, Legal Joy and Royal Stewart. Scorus fell heavily here, and sad to relate, he had to be destroyed. Round they go now on the way to the canal, and it's Teal, Freebooter and Legal Joy showing the way. Exciting moments these for all who'd backed the first or second favourite, or Miss Dorothy Paget's well-fancied runner. The order was maintained at the canal turn. Here again the field was thinned out and possible belied his name. At Valentine's the favourites were in front, but there was still a big field following not far behind. If you happen to have backed another delight, this is where your money went west and how. With 19 more fences to be taken and less than half the distance covered, Teal and Freebooter were still going strong. There was little to choose between them, but a loose runner, Caesar's wife, the grey mare, was becoming rather a menace. It's a bad habit of hers. And that's how it went the first time round. Teal leading from Freebooter and Legal Joy all the way. And I think you'll agree that Movie Tone shows you the Grand National as no eyewitness could see it. <laughs> Off they go into the country now, with all except two of the jumps to be taken a second time. Teal and Freebooter clear the 17th in front of the field, but two more come to grief, Roymond and Menzies. Teal and Freebooter continue to go like clockwork for jump after jump. They lead over the 21st, and here, ironically, it's Border Luck who suffers misfortune. Beaches again. Arthur Thompson in the dark shirt makes a neat recovery from a mistake by Teal. Traveller's pride, alas, is humbled here. And now, with Freebooter just ahead of Teal, it does begin to look as if that great entry horse is going to do it again. But there's not much in it as they reach the canal turn. Teal in front here. And then the favourite falls. 
Yes, Freebooter's gone, and now surely it's Teal's race all right. But closing on him quickly, Legal Joy, who's never been far away, makes a strong challenge. <laughs> Teal's now fighting a second duel. Royal Tan and What No Son are there too, only a little way behind the leaders. Then Legal Joy heads Teal. This is certainly a Grand National with a thrill every yard of the way. But whose Grand National is it going to be? Legal Joy and Teal race on neck and neck towards the last fence. There's absolutely nothing to choose between them now. It all depends on stamina. Over they go, Teal and Legal Joy, followed by Royal Tan, who promptly loses his jockey. Teal and Legal Joy race on to the winning post. It's a close thing, but Thompson's mount has that little bit extra that spells victory. Drawing ahead of Legal Joy, he goes on to win by five lengths, having given a nearly faultless display all the way round. Thompson, by the way, who won on Sheila's Cottage in 1948, is the first jockey to win two nationals for many a year. And the first to congratulate him were the riders of Legal Joy and What No Son, who finished third. Teal's burly owner, Mr. Lane, was fairly on tiptoes to lead his horse in. What a thrill for him. What a thrill for his family and his friends. As for Teal, uh, well, I dare say he's had enough. <laughs>